Welcome to the Anywhere Office. Hey, Phil Montero from the AnywhereOffice.com here, and I am like a kid in a candy store because I have my new iPhone 4 on the Verizon network. Uh, I've been an iPod Touch user for about three years now, so I'm very familiar with the uh, the iPhone or iPod Touch interface, but I didn't have a camera on mine and wanted an iPhone, but I really love Verizon and their network and didn't want to go to AT&T. Too many drop calls and, and other problems that I'd heard about. So I was very excited and have been chomping at the bit and essentially waiting for this phone to hit the Verizon network. I pre-ordered mine and got it about a week earlier uh, than, than when they made it in the stores, which is actually today is when uh, everybody else can buy it. I've had it since Monday. Um, but I realized that there's a lot to learn about this if you're new to the iPhone, or even if you've been using an iPhone or an iPod Touch, there's probably some stuff you're wondering about how to do. And and I think a lot of people use Gmail for their, uh, for their mail, uh, Google Calendars, and contacts. And you're probably wondering, because there's a number of ways that you can configure that. Uh, to work with this device and completely synchronize so you have seamless mail, contacts, and calendars between both. So what I'd like to do is walk you through um, some of the steps, step-by-step uh, -step instructions on the best way to configure Gmail, contacts, and calendars to all sync with this device. Uh, so let's get started and take a look. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through the steps to set up your iPhone to sync your contacts, your calendars, and your mail with Gmail, if that's what you use. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go to the settings screen, and tap settings, uh, and you'll notice that as you scroll down a little bit, you have mail, contacts, and calendars. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to tap that. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to click add account right here. Now, you might think that what you want to do is click the Gmail option here, and that would be fine, but I've noticed that if you use that built-in Gmail option, it will, uh, I believe it will only sync your primary calendar, not additional calendars that other people might be sharing with you or that you might have added, and it doesn't provide for contacts. It's just mail and calendar. So we're actually going to skip that, and we're going to do what's called Google Sync, and these, these are the steps that are recommended by Google. So what we're going to do is choose Microsoft Exchange at the top. And the first thing you're going to do up top here is you are going to enter your email account, your Gmail account. So I'm just going to type that in. And you're going to skip domain for now. You're going to come down to username, and username is also your full Gmail address. And what I'm going to do instead of typing it again is I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to hold my finger down on that. I'm going to choose Select All. I'm going to choose Copy. And then I'm going to hold and press my finger in the username space until it zooms. Let go. And I'm going to choose Paste. So that's a little quicker. And then here, you're going to enter your password for your Gmail account. Okay. Once you've entered your password, the next thing you're going to do is click the button that says Next. Now it's going to spin around while it's verifying, and you may get an error message that says it couldn't verify this, or it may just come back uh, after it spins for a bit. Uh, you may get a message that says unable to verify certificate, but what should happen is eventually, either if you get that error or not, it will come back and it will ask you for the server. And you see that appeared right here, server, which was not there before. And we're going to tap here, and the server we're going to type in is m.google.com. That's Google's mobile server, m.google.com. Push the dot .com button. Uh, you also can change the name of this right now. It says Description Exchange at the bottom. Uh, if you'd rather call it something different, you can call it Google, which is what I'm going to put here. And click the Next button. It should go through. It has now confirmed, and you see here are the three options. I can turn any of these on, Mail, Contacts, and Calendars. So if you leave all of those set, you just click Save here. Configuring sync, it's done. And now we are back to our main screen. So now you are completely configured. You can click settings, back out of this, 
and use this button at the bottom here. And go back to your home screen. Now you can tap calendars. You'll see your calendars in there. Uh, you can tap your mail and you can uh, go into your contacts. It may take a few minutes to sync up, but uh, once it does, then all of your contacts will be in there and it will sync them back and forth. If you add a contact or change a contact on your iPhone, it'll sync back to uh, to your Gmail contacts and back and forth. Same thing with the calendar. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is how you can add multiple calendars um, to, you, you have to take one more step, which is to go to the Google Sync site and tell it for this device which calendars you want to sync. Okay, now in this step I'm going to show you how you choose which of your Google calendars you want to sync with your iPhone. Um, and if you're like me, you probably have more than one calendar. In fact, that's one of the great things about using Google's calendar is that you can choose, create multiple calendars, maybe to color code events or keep work and personal uh, appointments separate so you can turn one calendar on and off. Also is the ability to share calendars. So for example, my wife and I share calendars. We have a family calendar where we put uh, family things that we're doing so we can both see them. Uh, and I also share calendars with other people that I work with. So. Uh, in order to choose this, you can choose up to 25 calendars, and we're going to launch our Safari browser here. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to go to m.google.com forward slash sync. So I'm just going to type that in here, m.google, and you can see I've already got it here, m.google.com forward slash sync. I've already been there. And when you first come to this page, I've already logged in, but if you haven't logged in yet, when you first come to this page, you would click, uh, you see here I'm logged in, philmonterogmail.com. It would ask you to log in with your Google account. So you type in your username and password, and then it will show your device, iPhone. I also had a couple of iPad, iPods, uh, so you see those are also listed here. But in your case, you would have just one device, uh, assuming you only have one Apple device like this, it would be called iPhone. And when you click that, it's then going to go through and it will show you all of the calendars that you have. It says select up to 25 calendars to sync to your device. So what I've got here is my calendar. I've got a client calendar. Uh, here's my family calendar. I have a separate calendar for workshops and speaking events that I do. Uh, and then some shared calendars here. I have a, a holiday calendar that puts holidays on there, uh, as well as some other people whose calendars I, uh, I share. So I can go through and just tap to check any calendars that I want. Once I've got that all set, I click Save. And that's it. Calendar selection successful. And again, it will take a few minutes to go through, but when you go to your calendars... So you have to give it a few seconds to sync. But now when you come in here, it will show all of those and it will use color coding. Now when you're setting appointments on your iPhone, you'll notice if I click plus to create a new appointment now, I can create the title and the time and all the alerts and everything that I want here. But down here where it says calendar, by default, it's my personal calendar. But if I tap that, I now get the list of all the calendars that I have the ability to write to. So if this was a workshop or a speaking event, I can add it to that calendar instead. And it's got color coding here just like it does in Gmail. So Great, so those are the steps on configuring Gmail to sync with your iPhone or iPod Touch, whether you're on AT&T, whether you have iOS 3 or iOS 4. Um, those steps will work. Now, those steps are for if you want to use Gmail as your primary email address. I'm actually going to be doing another video tomorrow um, on the blog at theanywhereoffice.com where I'm going to show you how you can set up the mail portion a little bit differently if you want to actually send mail from your own domain, which is what I do. I don't use my Gmail account as my primary email. Although I'm using Gmail, I send mail from my, uh, my address at theanywhereoffice.com. And so uh, make sure you check back tomorrow where I'll show you how to set up the mail portion differently than contacts and calendar so that you can use your own domain uh, when you're sending and receiving from your iPhone or iPod Touch. Phil Montero from TheAnywhere.com. See you soon.